If you're someone that's considering to start an Amazon business, but you're kind of confused about exactly which steps you need to take, well, in today's video, I'm going to go through the five or six basic steps that every single beginner needs to know for them to be able to start their Amazon business in the right way from day one. And if you're new to this channel and you've never seen me before and you're thinking, who is this guy and why should I listen to him? Well, welcome. My name is Sam. And on this channel so far, I've been able to make a video every single day to help you guys when it comes to making money online. But most importantly, I was able to start an e-commerce business selling on various different e-commerce platforms, quit my full-time job, travel the world to various different locations while still being able to bring in a source of income from my e-commerce business. So I definitely know a thing or two that's going to help you out. So as always, I don't want to waste any more time. I want to get right into it. If you find any value in this video at any point, don't forget to press the like button. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much in advance. Don't forget to subscribe as well. Hit the bell notification. Let's get right into the video. All right. So right in front of me, I got these six different steps that every single beginner needs to be aware of if they're considering to sell on Amazon. And one of the first steps that every single person needs to take is to make sure that they understand the pros and cons of selling on Amazon. Amazon in the first place. And the reason why this is important to do with every single online business that you might be thinking about starting is because you need to make sure that it's definitely something you want to do over the long term. If you haven't fully understood the pros and cons before getting into something, then when you now get into it and you're doing it full time, you're going to end up giving up as soon as you hit some sort of an obstacle. So let's start off with some of the cons. Now, one of the first things that you guys need to know is that some startup money is going to be needed for you to get it off the ground. So specifically when it comes to starting an Amazon business, you are going to need some sort of money to get things going. It's not like a dropshipping business where you're going going to be able to set everything up and then only once you're able to make a sale that's when you're going to buy the product from your supplier. Amazon is the complete opposite where you are going to need to have some sort of a budget for you to buy the products up front and for a lot of you that may not have the budget or you may not have the patience to wait for things to take off then this is definitely something you need to consider. One of the next cons is that you're going to have to follow a lot of Amazon's rules and regulations and this is not a completely bad thing because of course there's always going to be different policies with any single online business that you're thinking about starting but the only issue when it comes to selling on Amazon is that if you do something wrong which may be a minor thing you're going to end up getting your amazon account suspended and sometimes trying to go through the process of getting the suspension removed can be a little bit of a headache and one of the final cons is that there's going to be a lot of general issues that you're going to have to deal with when running any physical product business for example dealing with returns dealing with faulty items these are some of the issues that you're just going to have to face when it comes to running any physical product business however moving on to some of the pros one of the first pros is that it's a great way for you to get a lot of traffic to your products and the second pro is that you're going to have access to to the FBA program. And for those of you that don't know what FBA stands for, it's fulfilled by Amazon. And this is where you're going to be able to send all of your inventory to an Amazon warehouse. And whenever you make a sale, it's going to be Amazon's responsibility to pick, pack and ship out all of your orders on a daily basis. So if you're someone that doesn't really want to have to go through the hassle of fulfilling all of your orders whenever you make a sale, then this is definitely going to be a great option for you. And one of the third pros is that it's very simple for you to get things going. Now, it's not necessarily easy, but the reason why I believe that it's simple is because you're not really building a software, you're not doing any sort of difficult coding the entire process to being able to get to your first sale and then eventually your first ten thousand dollars so on and so forth isn't really a difficult thing as long as you're able to fully understand the steps and you're also able to understand any potential obstacles you're going to give yourself the best chance of becoming successful all right so swiftly moving on to the second step that you guys need to be aware of which is that you need to find a winning product and when it comes to my step-by-step -step process when it comes to finding winning products to sell specifically on amazon there's so many different ways that you can do it but one of the tools that i use is helium 10 and if you've never heard of it before it's simply a amazon product research tool that helps you figure out whether or not a particular item is worth selling so let me just quickly walk you through the step-by-step -step process of how you can use it so first things first obviously what you need to do is sign up for a helium 10 account and you can do that by clicking the link in my description down below because you're going to be able to save some money off one of their packages or you're going to be able to sign up for a free trial if you do use that link in my description down below and once you've signed up what you then need to do is click on tools over here then what you need to do is click on black box and from this stage you're going to be given the opportunity to enter in specific filters so i'm going to show you exactly what I type in for me to be shown products that's worth my time for me to do a little bit more research into. So one of the first filters that I look at is the price. So what I normally do is enter in between 15 to around 40, maybe $50. The next filter that I set is the monthly revenue, which is going to be minimum $10,000. The next filter that I like to set is the review count. I like to make sure that whatever item that I'm going to most likely sell hasn't got more than 500 reviews because this is going to make it a little bit difficult if I'm thinking about competing with that seller. So for the purpose of this video i'm going to set it to around 500 but normally i like to look for items that have no more than 100 reviews because again it's going
it's going to be difficult when it comes to competing with those type of listings. And of course, depending on what other products you're going to sell, you're going to be able to go through the rest of these filters if you want. But for now, I'm going to leave it as it is and click on search. Then what I do from this point is scroll through and see if there's an item that stands out to me and an item that I believe I'm going to be able to potentially sell and do a little bit more research into. So there's this product over here, which is a microwave bacon cooker by the looks of it. And I can see that this particular listing was able to make over $12,000 in one single month. And I can also see over here that they've got a rating of 3.7%, which means that they're getting a lot of negative reviews, which also means that I'm going to be able to figure out their weak spots, see exactly what they're doing wrong, and then maybe better them, sell the items so that I can also take a piece of what they're making. And one of the next things that I do for me to get a better idea of if other sellers are making money and it's not just that one listing, is that I type in the name of the product into the Amazon website. As you can see, I've just typed in microwave bacon cooker. Then what I do is use the Helium 10 Google extension Chrome tool. Then click on this option over here where it says X-Ray Amazon product research. And there's a few pieces of data that I like to look out for. So right there, we can see that this particular item has been able to generate almost $640,000 in the last 30 days, which is obviously a lot of money and it shows that there's a lot of demand for this product. But one of the next things that I like to do is go over here where it says review count and then sort it from lowest to highest. And if we just scroll down just like this, we're able to see exactly how many reviews all of these different listings have. And we're also able to compare it with how much money they're making on a monthly basis. So don't forget that if you wanna sign up to Helium 10 for a free trial, or you wanna sign up for one of their packages and get a discount, you use that link in my description down below. So moving on to the next step, once you have found a winning product that you believe that you wanna start selling is that you want to now find a supplier and make sure that you check the return on investment. And one of the main websites that I like to use when it comes to finding suppliers is alibaba.com. And if you've never heard of them before, you're gonna be able to find 80% of the products that are listed on Amazon on alibaba.com. And you're also gonna be able to import them mainly from China. Like for example, if we jump back onto Amazon and look at this product over here and this one over here, the exact same ones are available on alibaba.com. There's one over here. And the second one that we just saw is over here. And the key things that you need to make sure that you look out for when it comes to contacting a supplier on alibaba.com is First things first, how many years they've been on the platform. And you're gonna be able to see that by looking at this section over here. As you can see, the seller's been on alibaba.com for around 13 years. Now I like to make sure that the supplier's been there for minimum five, six, seven years. The longer that they've been on the platform, the less likelihood of you having any issues with them. The second thing that I like to look out for is whether or not they're verified, because what this means is that a third party company has gone to the warehouse, the factory, to make sure that they're a real company and they have the products that they're claiming that they have. And one of the third things that I like to look out for is the minimum order quantity which is going to be seen here where it says MLQ. And what this means is that the supplier is letting you know that they're only going to accept orders of let's say 1,000 units. But of course, if you're a beginner and you're testing out the products, you want to make sure that the minimum order quantity is less than 50, maybe around 10 pieces like we can see with this one over here. So those are the main things that you need to look out for. You of course need to make sure that you're going to make a profit depending on what price the supplier tells you. And also make sure that you're contacting as many suppliers that meet your criteria as possible so that you're going to be able to compare each of them with with one another in terms of their communication, in terms of the price, in terms of the speed of delivery, in terms of the warranty. These are the, some of the things that you need to bear in mind if you are thinking about using alibaba.com to find your supplier. So step number four, once you've found your supplier, you've checked the return on investment, is that you now need to sign up for an Amazon account. And the way that you're gonna do that is by going to sellercentral.amazon.com. And this is the page that you're gonna see. Once you're here, you're gonna be able to click sign up and go through the entire process. And of course you need to make sure that you verify all of your details before doing anything else, because Amazon is going to make sure that you're a real person. They're going to ask you to confirm everything in terms of your name, your identity, your bank account, telephone number, etc, etc. So just make sure that you verify all of that. Make sure that your Amazon account is confirmed before moving over to the next step, which is that you want to now start importing products from your chosen supplier. And I would advise that you only do this once you're 100% certain that you do want to start selling on Amazon. You found your supplier, you're happy with the product, you've made sure that it's a winning product, it meets your criteria. This is the point now where you're going to send money to your supplier and import the products to your house. And from this stage, you're now going to decide on either doing Amazon FBA or Amazon FBM. And as I said earlier, Amazon FBA stands for Fulfilled by Amazon, where you're going to send it to a warehouse. However, Amazon FBM stands for Fulfilled by Merchant, which is where you're going to send the products to your house and it's going to be your responsibility to pick, pack and ship out the orders 
every single time that you get a new sale. So if you do want to cut down on some of these storage fees that you're going to have to pay by going down the FBA route, then you may want to consider going down the FBM route. But whichever route that you decide to go down, whether you're going to send the products to an Amazon warehouse or whether you're going to ship out the orders yourself, you're going to need to make sure that you start listing the products as soon as you receive them. And during this stage, you just need to make sure that you're aware of using the best quality images, make sure that you max out the amount of images that you're allowed to upload. Also make sure that you're aware of Amazon SEO, which is search engine optimization. You want to make sure that you're using the right keywords within your Amazon listing for you to rise as high as you can in the search results. The key is to make sure that you're balancing the amount of information as well as the use of images within your listing so that the customer is able to scroll through and make an informed decision on whether or not they want to buy the product. But of course, there's so much more that goes into selling on Amazon. I just wanted to give you guys a basic understanding of the things that I wish I was aware of when I first started because it would have helped speed up the process and allowed me to get to my first six figures in sales a lot sooner. But I've got many more videos coming out over the next couple of days, over the next couple of weeks. That's going to break down a lot more useful tips and tricks when it comes to starting an Amazon business if you're a beginner. So make sure if you like this type of content, you press the like button so that I know what you guys like. Don't forget to subscribe as well. Hit the bell notification. And if you want to sign up to my completely free email newsletter where twice a week, I'm going to personally send you out an email to help you guys when it comes to starting your online business, whether it's drop shipping, selling on Amazon, affiliate marketing. Make sure that you sign up for my newsletter by clicking the first link in the description down below. And if you want to watch another YouTube video that I made not too long ago where I break down some other useful information that you guys need to know if you are serious about starting an Amazon business, then make sure you click the link right there. Check that video out straight after this one because it's already helped out over a hundred thousand people and I'm sure that it's going to help you out as well. All right guys, I'll see you on the next one. Make sure you stay safe out there. Peace.